Hi and welcome to my channel and welcome to at least this section of the video entirely shot on my 84 year old Litz Almar 90mm lens for my Leica. Um, just pre-worn, uncoated and I love it to bits and uh, these are the results from it. Anyway this time uh, I'm going to talk about a few things that have uh, not actually come up so far. I'm going to talk about apps for the film photographer and showing you a few of the things that I use. Okay, let's get into it. all the time is actually not designed for photography at all it's actually a compass well, if you think about it um, it's really quite important to know where the Sun is going to be at any particular point and I know there are apps I believe that will tell you that but I actually quite like to go old-fashioned and just use a perfectly ordinary well an electronic compass on my iPhone but that's really, really handy. It's also useful using an app that I'm going to show you later, which is a viewfinder app, which means that you can take some notes and orientate where you're planning to take shots from. This is really important if you're using, for example, 4x5 or 5x7, because you will save film like that. So yeah, a pretty simple app that you can use um, with a map or you can just use it on its own but a compass is really useful and I would put that as one of my number ones on a list of apps for photography. So on to number two. The next app I'm going to talk about um, people probably associate with using your smartphone to help out with your uh, analogue photography more than any other and that is a light meter application. Um, I've tried probably most of the ones that are available free and I've ended up using a paid one. Um, it's about five pounds. Uh, I'll give you a link to it in the description. Um, it's really quite versatile. Um, it'll allow you to change all kinds of parameters. Obviously you've got the usual ISO and, and shutter speed and aperture but you can actually um, calibrate the meter to your own style. Um, of course um, it, it has um, mostly a uh, reflected light mode but it does allow incident light mode if you buy a little disc which goes onto the um, phone. But I don't mess around with that. I've got a perfectly good incident light meter with my old Western meter and I don't mess about with that. Also um, I, it's got a very limited zoom in for spot metering and I have a spot meter which I can use but the great thing about um, an app for metering is that it's always with you and you can take a quick meter reading and it helps to train your eye a bit as well you can think is this a 125th at f8 kind of day and you can look at your phone and go, oh, 125th at f8 so in that sense it's a really useful training aid for yourself as well and it gets you out of trouble if a meter stops working or, or the metering in your camera stops working. A very, very useful piece of kit. Um, as I say, about five pounds gets you one. So, on to number three, and this is a really interesting one. I don't know if you're like me, but a lot of the time um, I'm looking around for pictures, I'm looking around my environment, um, trying to see where the next image that I actually want to take is. And sometimes I used to kind of look at it like that and frame it up and, you know, sometimes I've actually had two L-shaped pieces of card to do a similar thing with. But that really takes no account of the focal length lens that you might use and so I was really pleased when I saw that somebody had come up with, in fact several somebody's, 
have come up with um, a viewfinder app and the one I'm using is actually I think called viewfinder and it's a free app there's a paid one which is quite expensive and there's a free one and this one is really very good indeed uh, it allows you to dial in your image size in other words um, I, I use 6x7 uh, 5x4 inch and 7x5 inch and it allows you to dial in the lenses you regularly used um, like my 150mm uh, Fujinon um, or my 250mm soft focus Fujinon or my 180mm lens on my RB67 and then it also features film simulations which allow you to take a look at the image the way it will probably look when you actually shoot it so yeah I have mine pretty much always set to either HP5 plus or FP4 and you get a really good idea of what the result is going to look like now actually the app has a meter built in as well but I don't tend to use that I tend to use the one that's in the, the light meter application no reason why you couldn't use that and save a bit of space on your phone but I just find the whole viewfinder idea to be wonderful I can not bother to unpack my 5.4 kit from the bag until I find a scene that I really like the look of I will shoot it on the phone take a look at it see how it feels then I can set up and use the focal length lens that I've chosen uh, on the camera and make my exposure for real in fact some of the images that I've taken using the viewfinder app have just been nice images on their own um, and it's an incredibly useful piece of kit um, and it's always with you sometimes nowadays I will go out with my phone in my pocket for a walk and I'll see something and I will just use that app to compose around it and then I'll come back with the camera and also maybe when the lighting conditions are better it's a fabulous piece of software um, and it's for free so there's no reason not to get it okay now for my next app we are going to be moving into large format only really but that's fine um, a large format possibly and if you're going to be doing any night shots because the next one is reciprocity see I can actually say that word the reciprocity app is completely invaluable if you're a 5x4, 7x5, 10x8 shooter who doesn't actually want to do the maths in your head I'm a little bit allergic to maths so this is absolutely great for me what you have on this app uh, it's very very cool indeed you have a database of all your usual suspect films I mean foam pan that I use HP5 you name it Adox it's on there and it contains all the reciprocity failure information that you have to add for your exposure time so you meter you dial in the exposure time and it will tell you how many seconds you would have to add to the exposure not only that it has got the ability to calculate the bellows factor for a given extension and a given focal length of lens and that is absolutely wonderful um, it's meant that I've actually been able to start taking close-up photographs with the um, 5.4 for example without worrying and it's actually really useful for the uh, Mamiya RB67 as well so you just don't use the little scale on the side you can just use this app and, um, and work with that if it just did those two things it would be brilliant but in addition to that it will allow 
you to dial in a compensation for filters as well and it has a little exposure timer that you can count down the seconds on for your exposures. Um, I, it's a game changer for me. I love it to bits and I use it all the time when I'm out taking shots with the 5.4 and the 7x5. Um, in fact, if you're using 35mm, medium format, whatever, it's a really cool app if you're shooting longer exposures and or you're using a bellows extension. Just get it. That's certainly what I would say. Now, the next one, we're moving on to the developing side of things. And I've got a really cool app for that one as well. This next app is just a very, very simple database for um, the films that you use and the chemicals that you use and a timer. It's absolutely invaluable. I use it for developing all my film now. It gives you a nice audible signal every time you need to do an action, whether it be to agitate or to start or finish um, a, a part of your development process. Um, development, fixing, stop bath, all of those things. And you can use it for black and white and you can use it for colour. Absolutely fantastic. Really simple. No bells and whistles to speak of. Just an incredibly useful piece of kit. Um, the only criticism I'd have is that when I'm wearing gloves and I'm processing a film, I have difficulty in turning it on and off. But that's a really, really small issue. Um, great piece of kit. Um, again, invaluable when you're developing at home. Finally, and this is actually not really part of the apps for analogue photography, um, I just want to mention Camera Plus, which I use on my iPhone all the time. Um, it's a way of gaining control of your iPhone camera and actually putting your own settings into it um, and allows much more as well. Uh, and sometimes I'll just use that creatively. Um, in fact, as a quick interlude before I wrap up, I am going to show you a few photographs I simply took on my iPhone and there's nothing wrong with that. When you can't be taking analog photographs, take some digital ones. said as far as apps are concerned applies equally well to Android phones um, they won't be quite the same apps but there's plenty available um, very very useful don't ignore them um, they're not toys or anything like that they're very serious bits of kit so that's about all I've got time for for the moment uh, and if you've enjoyed this how about giving us a like and ringing that bell and maybe if you want to see a bit more of this um, you fancy subscribing uh, I've got a lot more content coming up soon and uh, lots to stick around for more medium format more large format developing all kinds of things so for the moment take care see you soon bye for now